let's get ready to rumble. We're gonna do this. Mark Price at devslopes.com and we're building a really cool app. The things that you're learning here are gonna apply to all of your professional web development. Okay, you're, you're becoming a full stack web developer and this is really complex stuff. It's not as pretty as I'd like it to be, but that's not what this is about. And uh, you could spend an infinite amount of time making your websites look perfectly, perfectly pixel perfect. So we're not gonna do that, but we're gonna make some perfectly cool code. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get this button when we click on it to add an item to that list. So let's get rid of our fake data. Let's get rid of baloney killer and all that stuff. You know, we just don't need it no more. All right, so here we go. Let's get rid of these. So we are here in the wish list. Okay, got rid of that fake data. And so I think the next thing we need to do is work with our product. Right here. So first things first, let's make this look not so ugly. JSX. Okay, so what we want to do is when this button is clicked, add to wish list, we need to trigger an event. And we haven't worked with those yet. So this is going to be your very first time working with events. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say on click, okay, equals. And you may be tempted to do this on click because that's normally what you might do. Um, but with ES6 and React, it, it kind of has a problem. So make sure you use the capital C because um, if you don't, sometimes there's errors, sometimes there's errors and sometimes there's not, and it's really inconsistent. So use the capital C. And then what we're going to do is we got to use a special syntax inside of here because it's ES6. You don't have to do this in the earlier versions of JavaScript, but you do here. And then we'll, then you call a function. Um, we don't have a function yet, but we'll pretend that one exists. We'll say this dot on button clicked. Okay. So inside the on click attribute of the a tag, we're going to call a function called this dot on button clicked. Okay. And really what's happening here is we're just creating an empty function and, and, and calling this here again. It's a little, it's a little thing you have to do with react and ES six. Um, you don't have to worry about the implementation of it. Just know that you need to do that if you're triggering a function here. Uh, so you don't get warnings and errors. Let's create our constructor. And I forgot my props. Let's give you some props, bro. And then super props. And then we'll do our bind functions and we'll create our function here. This is uh, called on button clicked and we don't need any parameters. So let's just do this. Okay. So bind functions, this dot on button clicked equals this dot on button clicked dot bind this. Okay. A few things to set up here, but no big deal. We've done this before. So basically whenever on click is, whenever one of those buttons is clicked, it's going to call this function here. So we're already, we already got stuff working, which I think is pretty cool. So <clears throat> let's see. We need to add it to the wish list. I guess that's really it. Um, we'll write some more code because in the future, uh, the button needs to change, you know, from remove to add and all these different things. But for right now, we can just test that it's working. So we need, oh, we need our data service in here. So let's do that. So let's import data service from dot dot slash services slash data dash service. We'll create an instance of it. But again, remember, even though we're doing this here, uh, there still is only one in memory. I'm just going to call this DS for data service. So again, like I said, even though we've already done this somewhere else, it's going to be referencing the same spot in memory because we made it a singleton with that instance. So all we need to do here is when the button's clicked is we say DS dot add wish list item. And it's going to be this dot props dot product. We'll add the whole product. Uh, which means we need to change this around here too because right now we were passing in this very specific items on that product the image url the title etc but we need to pass in the whole product now so we're going to say this.props.product.image url in fact let's just uh, copy those and then we'll put it here and put it here so for the title and the price so now instead of just passing in from our app the very specific uh, attributes we're going to pass in the whole product itself, which means over here in our app, we just need to change that around to app.js. Instead of passing in the title and the price and the image, we are just going to pass in 
the product itself. And that will be product. Cool. And let's change this to JSX. Cool. So the key, the product ID, and in this case, we're passing down the whole product as props. So let's make sure there's no errors. So I'm actually curious. Um, data service is defined but never used. That's in our wish list, which is fine for right now. And notification service is defined but never used. And that's in where the wish list. Well, I'm really just curious to see. Let's see. So if I'm clicking add to product from my product screen, I'm trying to figure out if, if we've got all the pieces connected. So if I've got right here, I'm adding a wish list item. And I know that's going to post a notification. And so the wish list needs to be able to listen for the notification. We may not have done that. So let's see. We have not done that. So what we want to do, yeah, what we want to do here is um, we want to add observers and remove observers for notifications. What we want to do is start working with some of the React application lifestyle uh, life cycle, not lifestyle, life cycle functions. And so we want to work with component, component did mount, and component did, or will, excuse me, will unmount. These are uh, specific React functions that will be called by React. And so when the component is mounting, or rather when it's about to load, or when it did just load on the screen, we can do something. Uh, same with when it unmounts, we can do something when it goes out of memory. And so what we need to do is add ourselves as an observer here and remove ourselves from an observer here. If we don't remove ourselves as an observer, what will happen is we could have a memory leak in our app, okay? The notification service is still holding on to this entire component, even though it's not on the screen anymore. And so it's just sitting there in memory and it'll be there forever possibly. So we don't want to do that. We want to make sure we're, we are a good memory citizen and clean up our own messes. Okay, so component did mount. How do we add ourselves as an observer? Well, first we need to create an instance of the notification service. So let uh, ns equals new notification service. And again, that's a singleton, so there's only one instance of it. And then we'll say ns.addObserver. And let's see if we can remember what we need to do when we're adding an observer. We need a, a notification name, the observer, and a callback. Okay. So the notification name, well, we probably need our notification. So uh, let's do that here. So let's put a comma, say notif, wish list changed. So that's the one we want to listen. That's the notification we want to listen for. So notif is changed. And then uh, the second one was the observer itself, So which is this, meaning this component. And then it wants a callback. What? What function do we want to call when the data changed? And let's create that function now. Let's do it right here. We're going to say on wish list changed. And it's we're hoping for a new wish list. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll bind it. Dot bind and this. So we've now bound it. And on wishlist changed. Okay, so what we need to do is pass in the callback. So this dot on wishlist changed. Okay, so we're adding an observer. Okay, we wrote the code for this. So you need to connect the dots. Don't think it's magical. Oh, it, it's going to magically work. We wrote the code for this. Make sure your brain is connecting the dots. We add the observer. So we're adding the name. Okay, we're adding the object itself that's observing us, this component. And then the callback that we want to be called when it's time to be notified. What's the phone number? that you want me to call when it's being notified because you could have multiple notifications, right? I could have another one here, uh, notification user did log out. I could have a whole bunch of notifications and different functions that do different things based on the notification. In our case, we only have one, which is on wish list changed. And let's just double check our notification service. So again, it was notification name observer callback. So we grab the list of observers for that specific notification name, okay? and what we do is we make sure it's not empty and then we add to it. Okay, so we say, hey, let's add a new object. The observer is the observer and the callback is the callback. And then we use the notification name as the special key. Okay, so the special key in our observers list and then we push to that array, this object right here. Okay, 
you don't understand, read this line by line until you do. Pause the video, stop, read through it again and again and again. It takes practice and time to understand what's going on here. We're writing real professional, we're writing real professional web apps here, okay? No more of this kid stuff. So it's going to get a little more complex, but that's okay. Growing pains. So, and then component will unmount. All we want to do is say NS, I already short-term memory, I can't remember, uh, remove the observer, so the observer and the notification name. Yeah, okay. So we want to pass in, so remove observer, this, and then we want to say notif wish list change. Let's get rid of that observer or that notification. So when the component mounts, this will be called, when it unmounts, this will be called, and this is looking mighty fine. Okay, so then when the wish list change, changes, okay, what do we want to do? Well, we want our list of items in the wish list. We want it to reset. So this one's pretty easy. How do we get our renderer in our component to reset? Do you remember? Simply by calling this dot set state. So we can say this dot set state. All right. We're going to set the wish list. Okay. And we're going to say, what do we want to say? This dot set state. We want to get the new wish list items. So wish list, and then we're going to say new wish list. Okay, are you following the chain of events? Okay, I, I know it's a little bit a little bit convoluted here, but it's, it's actually really clean code. So if we go over here to our notification service, okay, when a notification is posted, we hit the callback with the data that we want to post. Okay, so we send the data to all the observers. So if you remember from our product screen, when we posted, or when we went to add wishlist item, it then went into the data service, it added the item, and then the notification posted, and it's passing in the brand new wishlist with all the items. And since wishlist.js is listening, right here, it's getting passed in as the new wishlist, and then we set the state for the new items in the wishlist. So if all is working, and I don't see any errors just yet, data services defined but never used, um, it may just work, possibly. Should we, should we see and find out? I'm curious myself. <laughs> okay, so it's empty. If I press this, I would expect an item to appear in the wish list. That is very cool. Not a little CSS problems here, but it's fixed by stretching out the screen. Don't use it that way. So did it work? The answer is yes. It, the observer pattern worked. We posted notification. It, and then uh, we added the data. Well, we added the data to the wish list. The wish list, the data servers posted the notification. Our observer just listened. Can you now see how you could have multiple components? You could have 10 different components listening for the same thing. They're not connected to each other. They're just listening. And then they receive, um, they receive the call or the callback, and then the data gets passed in. Let's see what happens if I add more. So it's definitely working. Okay, definitely, definitely, definitely working. Uh, of course, these aren't doing anything, right? And the next thing we also need to do is get these buttons right here. We want it to change to remove when it's time to remove them. So let's do that too. So let's call this video done. We've made some great progress. And uh, let's uh, kick this thing in the butt and move on forward.